Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. Let's take a look at the field for race number nine at Santa Anita on Saturday. It's the grade one Rodeo Drive Stakes for Phillies and Mares. Our coverage is presented by Fazig Tipton. And two of the top contenders in this race, Decked Out and Bow Recall, are cataloged for the November sale at Fazig Tipton to be held on the evening of November the 6th in Lexington, Kentucky. This is a fantastic race, a nice a preview, perhaps, of the top Southern California contenders for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. The most interesting thing, if you're looking at it from that perspective this year as well, is considering that the Philly and Mare Turf is going to be run at nine furlongs this year. This race, 10 furlongs going down the hill. Some could make the argument that it almost plays like nine or nine and a half furlongs because you are starting going down the hill. Let's talk about last year's Rodeo Drive winner, the number five, Avenge, who really once stretched out to a, a mile and a quarter last year, just really seemed to improve. And she ran so well in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, only beaten a length by two world-class horses in Queen's Trust and Lady Eli. Now, she's only raced twice both times. She caught Lady Eli off the long layoff in the game, Lee, and we talked about that race, where there were some good things and also some things that maybe we didn't like. Sure. And that's why we were against her in the right. yellow ribbon. But I'm not sure if we were completely right or that circumstances worked against her in the yellow ribbon. Yeah, you hear afterward Richard Mandela come out and say that she she might have clipped herself. I don't know if it was in the gate or if it was early on she in the She was really race. fractious a little bit yeah, in the gate. And, and she might have uh, popped a little bit of a, a hole in one of her front feet, so obviously that's not going to feel very good, and maybe she has every reason to fade the way that she did. If you believe that, then certainly you can give her the benefit of the doubt. There's a part of me that just wonders, is she the same filly or mare that we saw last year? And, and I'm a little bit dubious. I think it's a fair question, especially since she's probably either going to be the favorite or the second yeah. favorite in this race. You have enough questions that you might want to take a chance against, especially with the quality in this field and this time form U.S. pace projector, which I'll disagree with, and I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> My show. <laughs> Five, one, four, nine are the first four horses in the time form pace projector. I'm a little bit surprised. I do know that Goldie Espony has shown speed at a mile and three eighths in mm -hmm. the past, but she can be very, very headstrong coming out of the gate. I find it very hard to believe that Mike Smith's just going to take a hold of her and let some of these other horses go. Avenge is fast, maybe faster than Goldie Espony, but I think Goldie Espony. Pony's going to be right up there with the leaders. I was going to say, she's going to be much, much closer than I think with the pace. And that can make the pace has. fast. Uh, absolutely. And I think the big thing, too, is, I mean, as far as Goldie Espony is concerned, I, I think she's going to be forwardly placed. But my goodness, that all of the connections involved had to look at that last race and say, disaster. I think they had to be a little bit disappointed. It was her first start since February, but she was able to make the lead and make it rather Easy, easily, yeah. and she just didn't have that pop in the lane. Maybe the layoff had something to do with it. I actually like her at longer distances, mile and three-eighths, yeah. mile and a half, and with other speed in the race, it could work against Goldie Espony, who figures to take money simply due to the fact that she's a Bob Afford Mike Smith production. There's a part of me that wonders if she's going to be better off in a race, let's say, when we get back to Del Mar, I believe it's the red carpet handicap, mile and three-eighths, something along those lines, because I've always question, is she actually this good? But I agree with you. Added distance. Get her as far as she can. Another Philly a mare that has shown speed in the past is the number one friends of fight who has really put on a mission. Surprisingly yeah. so at a big price last time out in the grade two John C. Maybe stakes and she really paid the price. She doesn't need those sort of running, that sort of running style to be successful. She was third in this race last year with a perfect trip. Yeah. And maybe breaking from the inside post, she can grab another good spot. I think she's the kind of horse that had a giant, giant number. She can hit the board. I don't know if she's capable of winning, but I think she can certainly get a piece in here at a big, big number. I agree. I don't know why she's been campaigning at these shorter distances. This is the kind of thing that she wants. Very similar to Goldie Espony. I think, really, she would even appreciate a mile yeah. and a half if you gave it to her, but a mile and a quarter she can handle. A change of tactics resulted in a change of form for the three responsible for love, a horse who in the Santa Barbara on the lead in the form of a Goldie Espony yeah. in the possibly perfect on an easy lead and run down by a very good horse, unfortunately, with sideline September stars. Responsible for love last time out, they took her off the pace. Hey! You can I do it. Yeah, I, I got to be honest. I thought it was a really good effort. The concern is, and it's something I don't know what you think. It, you when you watch a horse and you say, "Wow, that was a really good effort," and then you look at the figs and they come back in their light. Little light. That's a, that's a tough thing for me to make a real determination on because visually, I thought she was really good. It, it was kind of a slow pace. Yeah. It's hard to make, I guess, a, a fast fig with a slow pace like that. But I'm with you. She's sort of that 88, 89, 90 horse. She's still a little bit lightly raised. A forward move is certainly, uh, I think, in the Absolutely, works for responsible yeah. for love, especially especially considering this newfound running style and the likelihood of a solid pace. Uh, and so the price could be okay as well. Uh, Majestic Heat, uh, like Avenge, trained by Dick Mandela. Pace-pressing winner off a very long layoff last time out in the Solana Beach Stakes. This is a big step up in class. I've always liked this mare a little bit, though. I agree with you. I think uh, all of us here in the, in the office have looked at her and said, you know what, there's talent here. We like her. The problem is it just doesn't seem like when she's been tested, she hasn't passed the test, and then you've had a couple of layoffs here and there. 
Uh, I think she's going to be forwardly placed. I'm also a little bit dubious about a mile and a quarter. Bo Recall is one of the two horses cataloged to the Phasig Tipton uh, November sale uh, at Lex uh, in Lexington on November the 6th. And Bo Recall's got credentials. I mean, uh, she is a uh, grade one placed yep. in the Delmar Oaks last time out. I, I thought that she had to come very, very wide turning into the stretch. I also think that there was a good solid pace in front of her. Yep. She had her chances in the lane being out finished just a bit by Dream Dancing, who was shipping in from the East Coast. You've always liked Bo yeah. Recall, and there's a possibility that she's yet to hit her peak and she's going to get the right setup. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the distance, I don't think a mile and a quarter is an issue. I gave her a shot in the Belmont Oaks and it was just kind of a peculiar situation, whether it was ride or trip, whatever it may have been. Uh, the Delmar Oaks, I think she ran probably too well to not win. But at the same time, I can't fault anything with the other horses that were involved, Conte Patero, as well as Dream Dancing, who won. I think she has a puncher's chance in here. And Baselli the Six, you gave her a big pace in the Yellow Ribbon two starts back yep. when Avenge was up on that pace after acting up and injuring herself perhaps in the gate. Yeah. She came with a good solid run. Uh, I think she needs those tactics. I'm not sure if a mile and a quarter is what she wants. I kind of think she's a late rallying middle distance sort. Yeah, we've talked about it in the past. Some of these horses with big late turns of foot at the middle distance races, everyone just immediately assumes that that's going to translate going longer doesn't always work out that way. I think a long shot that you should consider is the nine Kiss Me. Now, I think uh, conversely compared to uh uh, Amboselli, Kiss Me, I will appreciate a little bit longer yep. distance uh, of a mile and a quarter. And in the maybe last time out, look, she kind of outpaced a little bit on the back stretch and entering the turn. She altered course on the outside. She finished with a little bit of interest. Uh, the blinkers come on. Uh, she showed quality in Brazil. She's been okay here, but maybe she is yet to, she's starting to race herself into shape. Yeah, I, I don't think she's totally out of this thing. Another one at a big, big price she can use underneath that first start here in North America. She had a little bit of traffic, and I agree that most recent start, probably a combination of some better horses in there, and she didn't have the cleanest go. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Rodeo Drive, and you are going with the other runner cataloged for the November sale at Phasic Tipton Lexington on November the 6th. And that's a horse that we figure is going to go for a pretty penny if she does yeah. go through the ring at Phasic Tipton November. And that's a grade one winner in Decked Out. And I, I'm interested in your thoughts on the maybe. It was her first race off an extremely long layoff. I think she was a little bit eager coming out of there. It was a good trip, and then it wasn't a good trip when she kind of got in tight at the 316th pole or so, but I think that's not her running style. I think she needs to be taken back to last to make one big run. Well, I agree. Normally, when you look through, the majority of her races have her coming from way out of it, making one big run from the back of the pack, and I wonder, like you say, whether it was her off of a long layoff being a little bit keyed up and ready to go, but it's not like she was pulling. She actually was in a pretty comfortable position, and then I'm watching the race, and I'm going, oh, wow, she's really in tight and tight. And then you hear Kent, or you hear Keith DeSormo say that, you know, Kent was a little bit upset with her when he got back because there was a hole there, and when he tried to go, that's when she started throwing a fit. She didn't want to go through. Now, whether that's a sign of her not wanting to go on as far as the racing is concerned, I don't know. But at the same time, I kind of wonder, maybe she was just kind of looking at it saying, I've already been too close to the pace as is. Take me back next time. Make that one run. Mile and a quarter, I don't have any concern about. I suppose the jury is still out. Does she want a little bit of cut in the ground? She's not going to get that, obviously, on Saturday. I liked her in this race last year. I'm going to give her another shot. I, I think she's going to be a big number, and I think she's got a chance. Plus, I wouldn't be surprised if they ran a slightly short horse by design, True. with the goal being if she's good enough to take them there, obviously the Breeders' Cup. Absolutely. But this race, I think, might have been the one circled on after she got a little bit of a late start to yep. the year, decked out, and with the pace expected to be a little bit hotter than anticipated, decked out could trip out, as could, though, the 10. Yeah. Good year for Roses, who some might argue is the horse to beat, who finished ahead of four of these common foes in the maybe last time out. And she was also bottled up, I think, right in behind decked out. Yes. which was kind of surprising that she yeah. was behind decked out. But she, her, her, sort of her hooves were forced by breaking from an outside post position. Corey couldn't get that position that she was able to get in races like the Gamely in the Santa Ana. How is this outside post position going to work? Is it going to work against her again? I guess the only good thing is you're going to have a lot of time. And I know you're going to have to go basically three, two and a half turns because they're going to start on the turn. I don't know, man. If she runs the maybe all over again, I think she's going to win in here. I think she's strictly the horse to beat in this spot, even with that outside post. She gets additional distance. I initially, earlier this year, I didn't love her. I'm starting to come around. I think she's really, really talented. You look at some of the horses she's run against. She gave Lady Eli everything she could ask for. and then some With a great trip. With a great trip, absolutely. But she did try the whole way. I think she's going to run a giant race here on Saturday. And I just would strongly urge, win or lose Saturday, don't totally discount her come Breeders' Cup time because a mile and an eighth, maybe that's a little short for her. I think she wants a mile and a quarter, mile and three eighths. 
She's not totally out of it. She's run well at Del Mar or something. Some of these other girls can't say. Good year for Rose. She's the horse to beat in here, and she's one keep an eye on Breeders' Cup. Give me numbers. Uh, in this spot, I like decked out, obviously, on top. I'm going 8, 10, 3, 7. I'm going 10, 9, 7, and 5 in the Grade 1 Rodeo Drive. Our coverage presented by Fazig Tipton. The race has an approximate post time of 4.30 Pacific. Good luck.